Hi, my name is Damien Marucci. I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon in Sydney. And today I'd like to talk about potential complications of breast reduction surgery. So the first thing to say is that breast reduction surgery is a very safe procedure and normally everything goes pretty well. But sometimes there can be a few issues and I'd like to talk about the potential complications. Obviously this isn't an exhaustive list, but I'd just like to go through the main things that sometimes can be a bit of an issue. So breast reduction surgery is done under a general anaesthetic and when you're asleep, the first thing I do is put local anaesthetic absolutely everywhere. So hopefully when you wake up, everything will be nice and numb. But once the local anaesthetic wears off, you may experience some pain. So for that reason, we'll give you some very strong painkillers initially through the drip and then some tablet painkillers to go home with. And some patients can get the occasional niggling pain that can even last a couple of weeks. But hopefully after the first week or two, you're pretty much back doing everything you want to do. Another potential risk of all surgery is bruising and bleeding. So bruising is pretty common. Uh, bruising tends to go away after a week or so. Bleeding can be more serious, however, and sometimes we even need to go back to the operating theatre in order to stop bleeding. But the chances of that happening after a breast reduction procedure are pretty low. Similarly, infection can occur after any type of surgery, including breast reduction surgery. The incidence of infection is very, very low. Um, the way it normally presents is patients might have some redness of the skin of the breast and it may need treatment with some antibiotics. It's very rare that patients need surgery for infection. Wound healing is normally not a big issue after breast reduction surgery. If you do try to do too large a reduction and the closure is very tight, in those cases you may end up with wound healing problems. Where the wound healing problems tend to occur is at what we call the T-junction, which is underneath the breast. And it's where three bits of skin are brought together. And it's often under tension. And at that location, there may be issues with wound healing. Some patients may even develop a small ulcer at that site. But normally, it only needs to be treated simply with either Vaseline and gauze. Patients can still, sh can still shower. They may end up with a little bit of extra scarring in that area. The other issue with delayed wound healing relates to the dissolving stitches which are underneath the skin. The body doesn't know they're dissolving and may try to push the stitches out before they're finished dissolving. So you might get like a little pimple and then the pimple kind of bursts and a bit of clear what appears to be fishing line will come out and that's a dissolving stitch. Once the stitch is out though, the wound does tend to heal on its own without any major issues. Scars are a part of any surgical procedure, especially a breast reduction procedure. Scars can be red, raised and lumpy for many months after the surgery. Some patients even develop a particular type of lumpy scar called a keloid scar. This is where the body continues to produce scar tissue even though the wound is healed. Keloid scars themselves sometimes even need treatment, but thankfully they aren't particularly common after breast reduction surgery. Different people scar differently. Some scars can be raised, some scars can stretch, some scars can be indented. Sometimes there's a little lump at the other end of the scar called a dog ear, but all that does tend to settle down with time. It's normal for there to be some numbness of the skin after a breast reduction procedure, but the nerves tend to grow back in and it's rare for that to be permanent. The goal of the surgery is to move the nipple to a new position with the nerve supply and blood supply intact. Sometimes the nerve supply can be bruised and there can be some numbness of the nipple, but it's rare for that to be permanent, although sometimes the numbness of the nipple can be permanent after the surgery. A rarer complication, which is far more serious, is actually damaging the blood supply to the nipple. If you damage the blood supply to the nipple during a breast reduction procedure, the nipple can die, in which case you might not have a nipple after the surgery. That is incredibly rare. Thankfully, in my case, I haven't had that happen to any of my patients, but it certainly is a well-recognized complication. I do everything I can to make sure that particular complication doesn't visit any of my patients. Another potential complication of surgery is asymmetry. 
almost all women have asymmetrical breasts. So breasts are, as they say, more like sisters rather than twins. So after the surgery, it's to be expected, it's almost normal, that there might be some minor differences in the breasts. Sometimes the differences can be in terms of the shape or the volume of the breasts. The most common area of asymmetry is the areola, which is the skin around the nipple. It's very common for there to be some minor asymmetries in the shape, the size, and the position of the areola between one breast and the other breast. With breast reduction surgery, there is a limit to how small you can make a breast on the day. The reason why is that you do need to maintain a certain amount of breast material in order to keep the nipple and the skin alive. So there is a risk after the surgery of not removing enough material, not removing a enough breast tissue, and then the patient might need a revisional breast reduction down the track. Similarly, there is a risk of taking too much tissue and then the patient is unhappy because they've actually removed more breast tissue than what they uh, wanted removed. So it's important to have a discussion with your surgeon before the surgery so that everyone is on the same page in terms of what the goal of the surgery is and what's gonna be a realistic result. A very common question I'm asked is, what cup size will I be after the surgery? You can't guarantee a cup size after the surgery. The reason why is that no two uh, bra manufacturers size breast differently. So what will be a C cup with one brand will actually be a D cup or a B cup with another brand. So I talk to patients more in terms of uh, looking for overall symmetry and looking for overall harmony, making the breast size and volume more in keeping with their shoulder and overall size. Okay, so in this video, I've tried to outline the main potential complications or issues associated with breast uh, reduction surgery. I hope this answers many of your questions. Obviously, this isn't an exhaustive list, and it's important to go through with your surgeon all the potential risks of surgery. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Damien Marucci.